Joining us now is James Carafano. He's the VP for National Security and Foreign Policy at the Heritage Foundation. James, thanks so much for being with us today. Uh, a pretty historic trip for the Trump family. Can you tell us what this really means for Americans? Right. I, I, you probably saw some reporting that said, well, this is just optics and Taj Mahal photo shoots. And it's actually way, way more than that. And this arguably started really under the Bush administration. But what Prime Minister Modi and President Trump have done have really kind of sealed the deal. They have forged a real enduring bipartisan U.S.-Indian strategic partnership that, that really is global in its implications. On the security front, uh, the United States now has a solid partner for building peace and stability, uh, particularly in the Indo-Pacific and South Asia. But, but this is really about matching Chinese influence in, in the Indo-Pacific. This is really historic. You know, on the economic front, they didn't seal a trade deal. Uh, that's disappointing, but that's okay. The Indians have a very cumbersome system. But when India comes around and actually starts to engage with the U.S. on trade, they're the fifth largest economy. When we link the Indian and American economies together, that's going to be an unmatchable economic juggernaut. What, when do we see that potentially happening? I the think in the deal. next four to five. I, well, I, I think there'll be a series of trade deals, and I think they'll spill over to each other and accelerate. If, if the Indians can actually break out of their kind of very dogmatic, socialistic, heavily government central way of managing their economy and really embrace the uh, uh, integration with the American system, think of China and the United States together, except they're both democracies, both respecting the rule of law, both innovating, not stealing each other's intellectual property, uh, that this could just be off the charts. And, and India has to do this. Like, they're one of the world's most populous country. If they want to grow a middle class, if they want to get out of poverty, they just have to create job after job after job after job. And people aren't going to leave India. They've got to bring jobs to India. And the only way they're going to do that is by, by growth. And, and, and good growth would actually raise both the American and Indian economies together. This, this literally has to happen. You know, I also want to talk about President Trump's presence in India. We saw in a, a cricket arena uh, full of 100,000 people. You know, w when we see this, this American president also going to a democratic uh, country, what message does that send for people who are showing up and looking at the Trumps around the world? Well, you know, I think this is a really powerful message, particularly, you know, you see people, and I, I do policy, I don't do politics, but... It's just a comment. You see people get on a debate stage last night, for example, say, America has burned all its bridges. It doesn't have any friends in the world. Nobody respects the United States. And, I mean, that's just a canard. When the president of the United States go to a populous country, if they, could have, if they had a stadium that could have filled a million people, they, they would have filled that. The United States has forged a strategic partnership with India. That's building partnerships. That's engaging. People love and respect America. And that's in India. And if you go around the world... If you go to the Middle East, for example, everybody is incredibly appreciative that the United States is there to push back against the terrorists, to push back to Iran. You go to Europe, if you go to Central Europe, pushing back against Russia, embracing freedom and, 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 and uh, national sovereignty, these are things that people love that message. So, so Donald Trump arguably is infinitely more respected, admired, and uh, the kind of leader people want to work with. Um, in comparison to somebody like Barack Obama, I, I literally night and day. All right, let's let's talk about uh, foreign leadership and and that influence as well. Uh, how do we see President uh, Xi Jinping of China responding to this uh, cordial relationship between Prime Minister Modi and and the president? Well, I, there's not a lot China can do about this because India isn't trying to balance between the United States and China. It's not Trump was here one day. Oh, tomorrow we'll get you know, the, the Chinese prime minister who will fill a stadium. It, it's not like that. India and the United States, uh, this is like Britain and, and the United States and Western Europe. Britain is an America's ally because they're balancing Russia. They're America's ally because we are enduring partners. Uh, so there's very little the Chinese can actually do. A matter of fact, the United States would love if China had better relations with India. That would be awesome. We'd like to have better relations with China. But 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 it, but it's not about kind of balancing like on a seesaw. Uh, we we are partnering together, and we want China to come to us. 
All right, that's some fantastic insight there. It's James Carafano. He's the VP for National Security and Foreign Policy for the Heritage Foundation. Thanks so much.